YouTube. Today I'm the Naughty Librarian. I am going over my mid-March wrap-up. So far in March, I have read six books. I think that's pretty admirable considering pretty much I read all my chonky books. <laughs> in the first half of the month, I just got all the chonky ones out of the way. So like, I feel like it's not a big number of books, but it's a lot of pages. So it's been intense. <laughs> Pretty much I just read romances and fantasies of different types of romance. Like, I think three different genres of romance. So I was like broad spectrum romance reading and then just like normal fantasy <laughs> stuff. Like usual, like that's unusual for me. Hello, like have you been to this channel before? <laughs> But anyway, I have six books to review. Let's get going. Let's start. First category is romance and I read three of them. Let's start off with my chonkiest book I've read this month, which is A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J. Maas. I just decided to go right into it. And you know what? It's pretty good actually. Um, you know, the, the Akatar series, A Court of um, Thorns and Roses? Ak yeah, th those what the words are. <laughs> I had like, I don't know, middling response to. Like, I liked it, I think it's good, but is it my favorite? No. We're no longer really following Feyre, we're following Nesta, her older sister. So it's a completely different perspective. And then this one is just completely an adult fantasy romance. There was some like, I don't know, iffiness about like, are the other ones YA? Because they keep getting put in the YA section of the bookstore, but they're fairly sweaty. And this one's just like, oh, we're, we're not even pretending we're not smutty anymore. <laughs> so yeah, the smut factor, like took it to 11. Like it's very smutty. Like, um, I would say not for the faint of smuttily hearted. Like, I don't want to get into too graphic of details because I don't want to be demonetized, but, um, uh, like, there's a lot. <laughs> but besides the smut, I think it's actually my favorite book of the Akatar series. One of the major themes of this book is trauma and overcoming trauma and becoming a better person, all those type of things. Because we're dealing with Nesta and Nesta has just buckets of trauma that she is just failing to deal with and is, you know, burying the trauma under, you know, booze and, and sex and all kinds of stuff. And everyone's had it with her. They're like, listen, you are a hot mess of a human. You need to get your shit together. And in comes Cassie and he's like, oh, I'm going to train you and you're going to work in a library. You're going to get off of your sorry ass and start like living again. Does it always go smoothly? No, it does not. Because Nessa has some shit she has to work through. So like realistically speaking this could have probably been at least a hundred pages shorter. Like it's overly long but that's just kind of how Sarah J Maas writes honestly. Like she's very overdrawn out and overly wordy and there's a bunch of different side plots that don't necessarily need to be there so I think it's just you as a reader if you're going to be bothered by that or not. But especially when Nessa's trying to get over trauma and it takes her so many times like I felt like maybe you could have taken it a couple times out. Like, it just got a little bit repetitive. But overall, I think the new tone of this and the, the general new uh, POV characters really did something different for the book. It's, it's, it really feels quite different. Like, I guess, I guess you could just say it just feels much more darker and much more adult. Not that the other books weren't adult books masquerading as YA. This was just not even pretending to be YA anymore. Like, this is a full adult book. The main character, you know, Nessa's 25. She's no longer, she's not a teenager like Farrah was. She, she's a grown woman. <laughs> and then Cassian's like 200, but like... Th that's definitely an adult. <laughs> so, yes, I think if you want something dark and angsty and fantasy driven and smutty then you're really gonna like this and you know it's just gonna depend if you mind it being like 750 pages because it's very long <laughs> like i've said this is my favorite of the akatar series i gave it four stars eh, you know what 4.5 stars i'm feeling generous <laughs> i did really enjoy it i thought it was very good it just really like laid into what it was trying to do and i and i liked that it picked a direction and went with it you know what i mean 
a sci-fi romance I read was Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell and this book was pitched to me as Red Wine Royal Blue meets Ancillary Justice. Mind you, Red Wine Royal Blue is one of my favorite books. It's one of my favorite rom-coms. I love it intensely. So that in space and I was like, I'm in, give me the book. <laughs> And surprisingly, I think this is actually very similar to a lot of the themes that uh, A Court of Silver Flames was dealing with. It deals with a lot of trauma and um, getting out of a very abusive relationship and trying to move forward into a new relationship. So there's a lot of angst along the way. We're following Kiam and Jainan. And Kiam is... Um, I don't know, a bit of a ne'er-do-well. He's not a bad guy, he's just kind of like aimless and sarcastic and very funny sometimes. And sometimes they just forget that he's funny. I don't know, there was some like ups and downs with the writing here, but whatever. Kiam, he's like that guy. <laughs> then you have Jainan, who is like the diplomatic envoy from this other planet. And in order for this treaty to be signed, they need a marriage alliance. Jainan's former spouse, Kiam's cousin just died. So they're like, hey, Kiam, you're pretty useless to everything here. You're gonna go marry this guy. Marriage alliance, cool. So Kiam is not like thrilled about the situation and neither is Shinin, but for not the reasons you think. Kiam is very much attracted to Jainan and that's not the problem. And he's, and he's a nice person. He doesn't want to be mean to Jainan, but he's just like, ooh, like your husband just died. Like this is not a good, place for us to be like uh oh <laughs> and the thing about Jainan is that uh his former spouse was incredibly abusive and Jainan has like years of trauma to like work through so they both are like starting off on this like misunderstanding foot so that all being said about the relationship there is a bigger picture here because they're also you know trying to save the galaxy through their marriage <laughs> There's like um, secret murders and, uh, and, and they're trying to start a war and like they're trying to get rid of the treaty and like all kinds of stuff. And then Jainan and Kiam, um, they're trying to not have that happen because you know, civil war and you know, galactic unrest isn't good for anybody. So they're trying to save the day as very unlikely heroes. I kind of briefly touched on this earlier that the writing was a little up and down. And for that reason, I gave it like, 3.75 to 4 stars. Like, I think it's a pretty solid debut. Like, I did enjoy it. I think the author is going to get better in time. This is a standalone. There's not going to be any bar books of the series. But yeah, the writing's up and down at points because you have Kiam, who is this very charismatic, sarcastic character. And he's kind of like Ferris Bueller in space, basically. And at times they forget that. And I'm like, who are you? Like pick a direction and stick with it kind of situation here. And then you have Jainan and not to like belittle the things that he's going through. He has a lot of like trauma to work through, but it got to be a certain points. Like it was just like spinning its wheels because there wasn't any progress happening. There wasn't any moving forward. So I just feel like there needed to be a few tweaks along the way because the pacing, I guess, was a little up and down. So as a debut, pretty solid. Did I like it? Yeah. Did I love it? Eh, not really. Like I liked it. I definitely liked it. It's, it's well on the like side of things. <laughs> but if you are into, you know, epic space fantasy and, and um, rom-coms, smashed up into one thing, I think you'd actually really like it. So do I recommend? Yes, it was pretty good. Do I want to see like this author's second or third book? Yes, because I think that's going to be even better. So I don't know, it's solid for a debut, but could have been better. A historical romance I read was Highland Treasure by Lindsay Sands. This was my treat yourself book because like, let's be real, all Lindsay Sands historicals are kind of the same story, just in different packages. And this one is no exception. It is, you know, a, a Highlander kilty romance with the Buchanan brothers again, and um, someone's trying to kill this lady, and they gotta stop this person from killing her, and then they're gonna fall in love and get married. Like, 
that's all of the books. <laughs> this one, however, was following Rory, who has always been my favorite Buchanan brother because he's supposed to be a soft boy doctor. And that's why I like him. I don't know this brawny fellow on the cover. Like, look at this. Like, this does not scream soft boy doctor to me. I mean, they do make a point in the plot of saying like, oh, he's been training with his brothers to learn how to swing a sword actually because like, everybody's trying to kill their wives. <laughs> so it's kind of important to know. So yeah, he's a little buffer now, but like, no, 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 no. Like he's soft boy doctor. There's no way he's that big. But anyway, I'm sorry. I just, I harp on the cover because it's ridiculous to like a strange degree how ridiculous it is. <laughs> so we have Rory and he's out healing people, doing his doctor thing. And then he comes across Elisand and uh, she is a girl on the run. This guy, came to her house, killed her parents, beat the shit out of her. He's like going crazy and he's trying to like get this thing that he thinks they have. And so, you know, through things she ends up escaping and she has like a couple soldiers with her. And she's like, hey, my mom is this guy's cousin in Scotland and she told me to find you so you could take me to the Sinclair stronghold because Sinclair and Buchanan are like related through marriage. But like, we're not gonna get into that because this is like book nine of a series. So we're not gonna get into their, their vast family relationships. <laughs> so along the way, they have to figure out, ooh, who's trying to kill this woman because there's more like attempts on her life. And along the way, you know, she's also very injured. Like she got the snot kicked out of her. Oh my word. And Rory's a doctor. So he's just like, oh, I'll help you with your wounds. She's like, I know how to help myself. Like I know how to make like, ointments and stuff like I'm a healer too and he's just like oh really it's like two soft people doctors falling in love and also trying to foil an assassination attempt so like I love it <laughs> like this one like honestly it's a bit threadbare like it doesn't have like a ton of other things going on with it but like I'm okay with that because you know what? I'm just reading it for delight. I'm not reading this because I'm expecting like a deep angsty story. I'm just expecting kilts and smut and a murder mystery. And I got exactly that, you know what I mean? So four stars, is it an excellent book? No, it's not. However, hot damn is it fun to read. So yes, four stars, I enjoyed it quite a bit. It, you know, it's, it's a kilty romance book. Like what, what do you expect out of it? Next category is fantasy and I read three of them. I read The Name of All Things by Jen Lyons. This is book two of this series. I forget the name of the series already. Oh no. <laughs> oh, it's The Chorus of Dragons. Okay, that's, that's the name of the series. But this is book two. We're still following Kieran uh, without getting to everything that happened in book one because, oh boy, it was a lot. Uh, we're starting book two kind of from a different perspective. So now we're dealing with Janelle, and Janelle was hinted at a lot in book one, kind of dream woman implanted in Kieran's head and he finally finds her type of situation. I know that's a lot to like take in for a minute, but uh, we're going to their story and it's kind of what was happening concurrently to what was happening in Kieran's story. So uh, like part of me didn't enjoy it as much. It really took a long time for things to get going for me longer than it did with Kieran's story. I think just because I like Kieran better as a character. Janelle, Janelle never had enough vulnerability for me. Like, is Janelle vulnerable technically, but not as like endearing and charming as Kieran was. So it was harder for me to like get attached. I think the best way to describe this with the overarching plot Basically, there's this, there's wizards and there's gods and there's this main wizard, Relisvar. He's trying to resurrect the demon god, king demon guy, very bad guy. You don't want him awake. He will fuck shit up. Relisvar is like, I'm going to wake him up. And everyone's like, dude, no, we got to stop you. So now you have Kieran and you have Janelle and you have other people who are kind of been prophesized to come along and slay the demons, etc. And, you know, they're being led by the gods. And, like, the thing about this book that's actually really cool is the whole magic system and the way the culture is built around these gods. Because these gods are very active participants. Like, they show up and talk to people, like, on the reg. Like, <laughs> they're not just, like, beings that no one ever sees. Like, they are involved. So it's kind of interesting to see gods just showing up and, like, talking to people. And it's not, like, a weird thing. Like, they just do that sometimes. <laughs> And also, 
you know, wizards and dragons and all kinds of stuff. We're fighting with Rello's Far, and in book one, we didn't get enough Rello's Far action. We never really got to know him. This one does delve much further into Rello's Far, and it makes him a much more fascinating villain. Like, book one, you're just like, yeah, this fucking guy, you know? Like, whatever. This one, you're like, oh my gosh, this fucking guy! <laughs> so, different vibe. You get so much more backstory. And for that aspect, I really enjoyed it. I liked seeing... Rella's Var interact with Kieran because they never really did a lot of that in book one and now they are interacting and like there's a dragon battle at the end it's like a whole bunch of stuff and like I'm really trying hard not to like spoil things and I don't think I'm making a lot of sense. Overall I gave it like 4.25 stars just basically because Janelle's perspective was harder to get into for me than Kieran's was because she's just not as charming but there is a lot of cool stuff going on here there's dragons and wizards and gods and battles, oh my. But the other cool thing is now now we're in a different country and their customs are completely different than like the West. And this country, like they have a lot of different ideas about gender where basically there is no genders. <laughs> there are and there aren't. And it's like a really lots of complex rules involved in how they see gender and relationships between the sexes and like your biological sex isn't necessarily like your chosen gender and then sometimes it is and isn't and and both at the same time it's just very there's a lot <laughs> so gender fluidity great really cool like customs and culture building so the world building here if you're a world building nerd it's it's a fantastic you're gonna get so into it so I, I'm really into this series so far. I'm, I bought book three already. I'm going to read that one. I'm pretty excited for it. It's gonna keep going. I don't know. It's got dragons and wizards and gods and, and all kinds of stuff. Oh my, I'm very excited. So it was fun. I had a good time with it. Next up, I have How the King of Elfame Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. This was just like a fun little like jaunt I went on one day. It's really short. It's mainly pictures too. Like it has like full illustrations. And it's just kind of little like short stories in the Folk of the Air universe. And I really, really liked the first two books of that trilogy. <laughs> if you're wondering, the first book of that trilogy is The Cruel Prince. And then there's two books after that. Cruel Prince, dope. Wicked King, solid. Queen of Nothing, the third book, uh, hit or miss. So um, yeah, you know, it was one of those series. But I definitely wanted to just get like little fun stories about Cardin and kind of more of his backstory. Uh, Cardin is one of the main characters of the series along with Jude and you know he, he's, a, he's a prince of Elfame but very misunderstood so it's like stories from his childhood and stories from in between when he and Jude were interacting and like what his side of it was and his perspective and it just feels like a little book of fairy tales and it has lots of pictures and lots of vibes. So I'm just I'm just reading it for vibes and I had fun with it. It took me like, I don't know, like an hour and a half to read <laughs> and I wasn't trying that hard. So it was a quick little jaunt. I love the art. It was cute. It's kind of hard to read it because it's not like an, any real new material. It's just kind of like for vibes. So like, I don't know, five stars. <laughs> it's a great for vibes, five stars. Whatever, I, I don't have to be stingy with my stars. Last up, I have read These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Now I'm using the term read loosely because uh, this is a DNF. Uh, I read 50% of the book, so I've read half this thing. And uh, here's the deal, like part of me really wanted to rally and be like, all right, let's go. Like I can finish this, let's go. And the other part of me just like gave no fucks about anything that was happening. <laughs> basic gist of the story here is that it's 1920 Shanghai. It's a Romeo and Juliet retelling. Sith in this version are both rival clans of gangsters and also there's a monster in the city that's making people rip their throats out. Like rip their own throats out. Just throats are gone. So like concept, style points, off the charts. Love the concept, love the setting, the style, the world building of the setting because Shanghai was very much a metropolitan city and this is like kind of when the Communist Party was coming to power. And also it's very metropolitan as in there's a bunch of different factions of people in this city, like 
the Russians have a corner, the French have a quarter, the Chinese have a quarter. So it's kind of this big melting pot. So settings and concept of like magical throat ripping in Romeo and Juliet, yes, love all of that. It's dope, don't change a thing. Where the book failed for me was mainly on execution. And uh, like, okay, I'm 50% of the way through this book and I was bored to tears. Like, how do you make a book about people ripping their own throats out on the regular boring? I don't know how she managed to do it, but she did. <laughs> and you know what? I, I have pinpointed like one prime example of why I just, it was not earning my interest. And there is this scene with, with Juliet. Uh, this Juliet is, is very murderous and cutthroat, so that's cool. And she kills her first person when she's 14, and the story's in the book. And there wasn't enough put into that. They just kind of matter-of-factly told what happened, but there was no emotion put into the story. And I feel like even if this character is cutthroat, bloodthirsty, stabby as all hell, this is the first person they killed when they're 14. So you have life before this moment and you have life after this moment. I feel like killing a person is a big deal and it wasn't made into a big deal. And it's just like little things like that from this author that I was like, oh, that's just such a missed opportunity and it's obvious missed opportunities. And so like I kept like giving it a shot and then like I just couldn't get there. And then you have like our main couple, Juliet and Roma, and uh, they have no chemistry at all. Like 0% chemistry, none. I am 50% of the way through this book. There, There is no heat between them whatsoever. So I'm just like, oh man, there's not even like anything here. It's just like, you need to establish these things much sooner than f after 50% of the way through the book. So there's just like structure issues, execution issues here. Concept in world building, great, but like you need to do something with your character's emotions because there's not enough going on here. I think if I had finished it, I don't know, I probably would have gave it like three stars. Like it's average, it's not bad, but like ugh, it, it needs work. So I, I don't know, three stars, but I technically can't rate it because I did not finish it. Whew, all right, so those are the six books I've read so far in March. Kind of all over the place, like plot wise and like world building wise all over the place and like I've been enjoying it even though all of the books I've been reading are quite chonky. And of course there are surprise hits, surprise misses. That's kind of like my average, you know, two weeks or so. There's hits and misses and sometimes surprises. So overall, I don't really think anything was terrible. Like I didn't finish these Violet Delights but like it's average. It's like a three star book. So eh, nothing is terrible at least. So and some stuff was really good. I don't know. It's fun. Let me know in the comments down below, uh, I don't know, what's a chonky book you read lately? I've read a lot of them. Um, what's the chonkiest book and how many pages was it? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye!